We're still talking about the video of the damage from the tornadoes. And tornadoes yeah. in January, that just seems so odd. Strange, but yeah. oftentimes coming from supercell thunderstorms. Hmm. And Scott has more on that. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's interesting because typically the questions I've been getting from the school kids have been all about winter and, and snow. And then this question came in, and sure enough, today we had that occur. And I'll we'll talk about why. I talked about the cold and warm. But here is uh, the question from Horizon Elementary. Hello, my name is George. I go to Horizon, and this is my question. How does a supercell thunderstorm happen? Thank you, George. Great question there. How does a supercell thunderstorm happen? And here's George's picture that he was holding up here, and he's got... Uh, uh, he's got a lot going on here. Look at all the lightning that's occurring, and I think there's a lot of damage here along the ground here. Look at this tree tipping on over. And we saw a lot of damage today from the supercell thunderstorm. And what makes a supercell thunderstorm different from a typical thunderstorm is that you have a rotation involved. And here's the key, and this is why. With get a thunderstorm to form, you have to have air to rise and cool. It's hot air, warm, moist air rises, it cools, condenses, it makes clouds and then rain. Well, then the rain falls, it brings cool air down. Okay, the water cools the air. So that updraft that's coming in, that's warm and moist, when it gets hit with the down uh, draft of cool air, which you could sometimes get damaging surface winds, it tends to kill the updraft. If you get a thunderstorm to rotate, what happens is, is the wind will come on in in a circular pattern. It'll rotate in and the downdraft will be separate from the updraft. That's when a thunderstorm will continue to live because now you're feeding it all the moisture it needs and the Damaging winds and the tornado that can then ensue will be separate from what is going on with the updraft. So that's why you'll keep these things going. Of course, you get the hail up there as well. And you get that with rotation. You need to have what we call shear in the atmosphere, wind blowing at different le elevations from different areas, and you get the spin that occurs. It's actually occurring like this as the ground then comes up like this. So there's a, the, the nature of the severe thunderstorm is cold, dry air aloft. Here comes the cold front. I showed you that a little while ago. That's what we had. And it's lifting that moist surface air, but it has to rotate. And then you get the thunderstorm forming. So a great question from George. Unfortunately, we had a fatality out of this particular storm system here, which is uh, can't happen. It was a huge tornado. We're talking a half mile wide, leaving a path some two miles long. And when that happens in the southeast, the problem is, is there's too many people living down there. And that, when it's happening in the Midwest, you can have it be in the open areas. But boy, when these storms happen in the southeast, which happens in January and February, as the season wants to change. Florida's hot in the 80s now, at warm air hitting the cold air, and that's where the problems come. Mm. Interesting though, weather fact, 5% of all thunderstorms are damaging. 95% of all thunderstorms bring beneficial rains and cooling breezes. Unfortunately, the 5% can be bad. And it was. Yeah, it was. Was, was today, yeah. That was a great question. Yeah, it, it was. was. Excellent. Okay. Thanks, Thanks Scott. You bet. Well, it's